Hey guys, um, just wanted to uh, share a little bit of information on how to change your orbit manually, um, especially if you have a base with more than three modules. As you know, you cannot do a hyper jump or a warp with more than three modules attached. So if you are looking to move your um, your station into a different orbit, well, here is a way you can do it. Um, it's fairly simple. Um, there are some requirements that you're going to have to meet, and one of them is that you're going to have to have enough helium-3 in your reactor, okay? And I also recommend upgrading your parts as high as you possibly can. This entire ship is all tier 4 parts, um, but it's going to be needed for this demonstration. And uh, yeah, I may get some of the terms mi mixed up. Um, I'm not good with that stuff, you know. I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible for the everyday user. Um, with that said, let's uh, get started. Let's check out our orbit. Um, here is an orbit that I created. All right. Here's our ship. We are orbiting in this direction. It's an, a very elliptical orbit, and it's going to come very close to the planet Bether. Okay. Now, we are approaching what's called apoapsis. You'll see that here. Um, apoapsis is the furthest point. You can see the marker. Apoapsis is the furthest point in your orbit from the center of of the object you are orbiting. Periapsis is the closest point. So any time, and well, just so you know, if you are attempting to change your orbit, it is always best to save fuel by changing your orbit either at the apoapsis or the periapsis. Um, you could you could technically do it at any point in the orbit. Uh, it's just going to cost you more in fuel. And as you know in Hellion, fuel is sparse. Now you saw my I think I had just over 50 helium in my fusion reactor and if you see in the upper left corner here in my engines I have 259 units. Now you're gonna burn a heck of a lot of engine fuel so you're gonna want to make sure you have plenty to make any type of manually manual orbit change. Um, but to do it, let's uh, let's just uh, get it over with, and I'll show you uh, how I'm doing it. So, like I said, if we click on the ship, we're not quite at apoapsis. We're not at the furthest point from the body we are orbiting. We really should be, and I guess I could warp there to to make this a little more simple but I'm not going to I'm just gonna do it right here yeah I'll be wasting a little more fuel than necessary but this little difference won't make much of a difference so let's get started um first of all you're gonna see the apoapsis is here and 
when I go to make a manual adjustment to the orbit, I'm going to want to use the map, and although there is no up and down in space, um, I'm going to use this map as a reference for up and down, okay? So whenever I say up, it's relative to the map. Down relative to the map. But when we go to make a maneuver, the first thing we want to do is we, I mean, if, unless you want to change the inclination, that's how flat you are to the equator. So unless you want to change the inclination, um, you want to you want to fly at the same angle that it's currently orbiting. I mean if we were to burn up again relative to the map then we will be changing the inclination here and that's not what we want to do. We want to keep the same inclination although it's very it can be difficult to keep it perfectly at zero in this case because it's you know it's hellion it's there are no markers there's no way to tell you that you are perfectly level to a planet's equator and you know it would be nice if they uh, supplied us with some uh, um, that ball thing that Apollo ships had you know all spaceships have um, the um, oh I can't remember the term it's a ball that shows you how you know what angle your ship is pointing in space but uh, regardless we don't have that so we're gonna just eyeball everything so say I want to I want to take this orbit and make it perfectly round okay I want to make it perfectly round at the same size at the apoapsis okay what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this side of the orbit using the map take the side of the orbit and this side and angle them so that they are lined up okay and just like that and there you go you can see this blue line extending outward and that is that is our that is our uh, that's the angle at which we are gonna burn and we also want to put this A right at the edge when we do that. So something to this effect right about here. Both lines are on top of each other, close. And the apoapsis marker is right at the edge. Now, looking at this map, Let's focus on the ship. That's going to be important. Let's get that dot out of the way. Okay, there we go. So focusing on the ship, and where's my marker? There we go. So the apoapsis is right at the edge, and then we bring the map so that both edges, this edge and this edge of the orbit are lined up just like that and what do you see in the background at the A? You see, well we see these two stars relative to that marker um, we see this kind of dip in space 
we see these three stars so we're going to want to point our ship in this direction so let's look for that direct or let's look for that area in space so let's make sure that our ship is oriented correctly to the planet and what we're going to do is we're going to look for the planet Where's the planet? Ah, there we go. So we are oriented relative to the map correctly. If we were like this, then we would be relative to the, pla to the map, we would be upside down. And we don't want that for this, for this, you know, tutorial per se. So what we're going to do, we're going to swing our ship around and we're going to look for all those markers in space that we just pointed out and they won't be far from the planet but that also depends on how big your orbit is so oh, okay here you could see on the left of the screen I'm going to put my marker there's the two stars there's the three stars my cursor is over so let's look at the map again. Bring this dot over here just so it's easier to click. And there's the three stars, there's the two stars. So we're going to want to point in this general location you could see the dark area here dark area here it's kind of light here so let's look for that area dark area over the center of the ship here dark area there and the light area is here so we are pretty close I mean it like I said you're not going to get it perfect um, there's no way to get it perfect so once you uh, once you have your ship oriented do not touch it meaning don't move it left right up down side to side you want to leave it in this exact position at all times and the reason being is if you make a mistake well then you can always do a reverse burn or do the exact opposite to make a correction to your orbit so um, let's go back to the ship again and we're going to go through some of these things um, I have 59 units <coughs> in the fusion reactor so I'm only using 1.6 units of helium every hour now this is important if I pull this part out and this is why I say make sure you upgrade your ship as best as you can before performing this now that I took that part out, I'm going to be using almost uh, about five times the amount of fuel to make the same maneuver. Or the no, let me rephrase that. With that part removed, I will be using eight units per hour or five times the amount of fuel than I would be had I upgraded the ship or had I not upgraded the ship see now it dropped down and we're using a heck of a lot less resources just that one part now <clears throat> this is crucial here and I'm going to show you something we're going to turn our engines on and you turn them on by hitting enter if you see the bottom left corner it says enter 
there's an orange light going around it. It's going through its startup procedure and now the engine is turned on. Now if we run back and look at the electric or the electric usage, it's dropping severely, okay? So, it is absolutely imperative that you turn on your fusion reactor because the last thing you want to do during an engine maneuver is run out of electricity. You could endanger yourself, actually. You could run into a planet. You could eject yourself out of the system. Um, it could be very difficult and time-consuming using the sun to recharge your capacitor as shown here at the top see if I uh, well I can't really do it now because I have the engines running but this wouldn't be going up nearly as fast with the reactor turned off but regardless let's uh, get started here and make our uh, our uh, maneuver. So now that we are pointed in the spot we want, let's take a look at the map again, double check our position. We're approaching Apoapsis. Actually, we're close enough to where, you know, I would say, let's just do it and uh, make a slight adjustment. And, uh, well, yeah, let's make this I mean, let's make this orbit happen. We're gonna, like I said, we're gonna make this orbit the same distance from here to here as it is from here to here. So the apple, so the periapsis is gonna grow to the size of the apoapsis. And if I go too far, then they switch, and this will become the periaps and this will become the apoapsis. So once you're uh, in the seating position your engines are turned on you could use your W key to throttle up just like that. You're not going to want to do that. That's I, I guess you could if you really wanted to um, but if you use your numpad positive, there you go. Or it'll just, if you tap it once, it'll stay running and you won't have to look at it. Go to your map and you will just slowly watch. Oh, there you go, you can see it changing already. You could see the green was our old orbit. The blue is our current, and it's growing. So we're going to give it a little more fuel. Bring it up to 50%. Go back to the map. And there you go. You can really see it changing now. Like I said, the green was our old orbit. The blue is the new orbit that we are creating. I'm going to hover over Bether so we could keep a uh, better monitor the orbit here. So that's pretty much it, you know. So let's uh, throttle up to 100%. And look at the left side of your screen. The helium-3 is at 248.6.5.4. It uses a lot of fuel, but look at our orbit. Again, the green was the original orbit. And our new orbit, you could see, is changing significantly. And if you click on the ship, you could see that it's changing. Our apoapsis, again, from the center to the furthest most point, is 
423,000 kilometers and the periapsis right here to the to the body that we are orbiting that's Bether is growing in size that's very fast and that's how you change your orbit simple as that so let's go back to the gauges make sure we're not excessively burning fuel and if we were to if we needed to stop at any time just hit your W or S key and everything comes to a halt and our new orbit would be right there in blue so it's very close to where we wanted it's getting there our periapsis is nearly 300,000 kilometers now and our apoapsis is at 422 kilometers simple as that and let's burn a little more here and uh, go back to the map and you'll see we're approaching the same here look at the outside ring see the blue changing there and we have reached a circular orbit click on the ship double check your position and yep we are nearly a perfectly round orbit around Bether as you could tell by the numbers they are nearly identical so um, that's about it that's uh, and if you wanted to do uh, if you wanted to bring it back if, again if you wanted to reverse this say you are at, say you have a nice circular orbit as we have and you want to create an elliptical orbit well you do the same thing but backwards so again everything's already in position so we're just going to hit the negative button on our key our numpad do a reverse burn look at the map and there you go if you see on the left side our orbit is shrinking back to where it was pretty simple now um, let's talk about bringing let's say let's what if we wanted to bring the apoapsis of this green orbit down to the planet at the same distance as the periapsis. Well, the only way to do that efficiently is we have to get our ship down to the periapsis. So let's do that quickly and we will be right back. And actually what I will do is I'll just use this existing orbit because we're going in this direction counterclockwise anti-clockwise direction and we will move our ship about there and warp three it there and make it happen now this one you got to be a little bit quicker because as you get closer and closer to the body that you're orbiting you are gaining speed so you will quickly whip around the planet and miss your mark so you have to be pretty quick about this. So 
so let's get over there and we'll begin our demonstration. <laughs> Okay, as you could see, we are s reaching our destination here. This is our new orbit. Well, it's actually the same orbit that we started with, with the first tutorial. And this time, what we want to do, we want to bring the Apple apps down to the planet so that it equals or as close to the periapsis. Click on the ship to tell you what the periapsis is. And that's 41,600 kilometers. That's right at that point, right there. That little P. And the apoapsis is way over here. So um, I'm going to make one more jump because I didn't want to slam into the planet. So let's uh, look for our little marker. And we'll bring that about right there. Good enough. Let's warp to that. Okay, setting up a jump from here to here. And now that it's set, I'm just going to move this marker out of the way. And you can see our ship is going to come close to the atmosphere. Here's our periapsis. Now this one, we're going to have to be a little quick about it. So, like I said, line up this edge of the orbit with this one and keep the marker at the furthest, most outermost point you can. Line them up and let's point to the ship. Double click or that's no, not letting me. Now that's the problem. It thinks I want to make an adjustment. Uh, okay, no big deal. So let's look. What do we have in the background here? We have this group of stars. We have this group here. We're reaching apoaps really, or periapsis really fast now. In fact, we passed it, but that's okay. That's okay. No, we'll just uh, point at these stars here. See what I mean about being quick about things? Because you could easily lose uh, your uh, marker, especially your periapsis, because we're going so fast around the planet. So we're going to pick out these groups of stars right here. Turn our ship to the left. And that would be right there. Hard to see in the sun, but those are the stars. So again, in this case, what we're going to want to do, instead of accelerating, we're going to want to decelerate. We're going to want to slow our orbit way down, so give it reverse thrust, about 50%. Go to the map, And go from the top view. I'm going to give 
needs a little more thrust, I think. Oh, there we go. Click on your ship. Always make sure to click on your ship. And this will show you your new orbit. We are burning at 50%. And this, when you see this, this means that it's going to interfere with an object like broken marble or another moon. In fact, it would probably be burner because they are approaching the same point at the same time right here. So that's probably why we got that warning. So we see the new orbit being formed. So let's go back to our ship and give it a little more. We'll give it a hundred percent reverse thrust. Go back to the map, make sure you click the ship, and here you go. You can see our new orbit is slowly going down in size. Now you can see our marker, we missed our, uh, we missed our mark, that was right here. But again, you know, there, we don't have timers to tell us when to burn and how to do it at what angles but as you can see the angle hasn't really changed and uh, that's because we pointed exactly at the right location and that's the most important part but yeah um, and then if you wanted to grow your orbit you would just forward thrust so that it would give you more speed to get away from the planet. Um, I think that's pretty much covers it. Uh, I, I know it's not like uh, any scientific means to do it. You know, we don't have the tools to tell us timing and fuel usage and all that other wonderful stuff. But if you're in a hurry you need to get your base out of an orbit into a new orbit this is how you do it um, and just make sure that whenever you do an orbital burn if at all possible burn at the markers your periapsis and your apoapsis to save the most fuel you possibly can and uh, yeah, with that said, I'm going to shut the engines down. We'll take a look at the map, click the ship. Here's the original orbit, and this is currently our new orbit. So if I were to click this here, delete, remove the orbit, click the ship, there you go. There's our new orbit. Simple as that. Um, hope it helps somebody. I know it's not a perfect tutorial, but it works, and it works every time. Just make sure you have the, your, your ship is upgraded as much as you possibly can get it. Make sure you have uh, a, a ton of fuel. You, you know, you could use a lot of fuel making these maneuvers, especially if you've never made them before. So collect a lot of helium-3. And uh, and you should be okay. And if you have any issues or problems, so you see your orbit running into um, a planet or a moon or something that you are not happy with, remember what I said. Don't change the orientation of your ship. Just do the exact opposite. If you were doing a forward burn and you need to make a change do a reverse burn and vice versa if you are doing a reverse burn to change an orbit and you find you're in trouble do a forward burn to get out of it but do not change the orientation of your ship like this don't change it in any way because you could be you could become lost and if you're lost, it's very hard to recover. Um, uh, with that said, like I said, I hope I helped. Um, 
any questions leave in the comments and I'll do my best to further explain it um, but until next time I hope you enjoyed this and uh, yeah I'm not one to sit here and say yeah hit the subscribe button yeah, to, you know you do what you want to do you know but with that said thanks for watching I do appreciate it and see you in Hellion take care